Hey, um, something I wanted to mention that's really been bothering me lately, and there's a new law in Texas that that is designed on, on its surface to appear to restrict abortion, but it, it's it's much worse than that. Um, if you're a regular listener to this podcast, you know my concerns about the destruction of democracy by the Christian right in this country, the Christian fascists. And again, let me say I'm not referring to uh, people who subscribe to the Christian mythology. They go to church every Sunday, they tithe, they do good works, they go home, they forget about it. They may pray before they have their meals, whatever, but they don't use the religion as a hammer, as a cudgel, as a spear, as a weapon They use their religion for their own personal um, internal balance or peace of mind or what have you. So when you hear me rail against the Christian fascists, which I do on a regular basis, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the people who are using Christianity as a uh, lethal weapon against democracy. So having said that, um, there are efforts going on right now in, in a number of these red states, so-called, to pass increasingly restrictive limits on a woman's privacy. Now, it, it comes under the heading of restrictive abortion laws, but it has not a damn thing to do with abortion and everything to do with controlling women, especially women's sexuality. Um, Now, the efforts to pass these restrictive limits on the privacy of women has ramped up in the past few years, and that's because the composition of the Supreme Court, thanks to the orange vomit Donald Trump, has made it more likely that those laws, as these red states pass them, will be upheld. But there's a new law in Texas that's set to go into effect on September 1st. And it's especially worrisome. So much so that Professor Lawrence Tribe and Professor Stephen Vladek have written an op-ed piece for the New York Times I want to share with you. You know who Lawrence Tribe is. He's the Emeritus Professor of Constitutional Law at Harvard Harvard Law. And uh, Stephen Vladek is a professor at the University of Texas School of Law in Austin. Now, here, here's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm quoting from their piece, but he, the background is not only has Texas banned virtually all abortions now after the sixth week of pregnancy, sixth week of pregnancy. And if you are a woman and some of us men, uh, you know, or we know, six weeks into a pregnancy is a point where a lot of women don't even know they're pregnant. But... The, 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 the horror, the Christian horror of this Texas law, this new one, is that it has also provided for enforcement of the ban by private citizens. By private citizens. In other words, if you suspect that a citizen of Texas is seeking to obtain an abortion after the sixth week of pregnancy, not only will you be able to sue the provider to try to stop it, But if you succeed, you'll also be entitled to compensation. Uh, That's what's known as litigation privilege. And the litigation privilege that's written into this law would also likely protect you from a defamation claim if you turn out to be wrong. Maybe the woman isn't pregnant. Now, the law is in Texas known as SB 8. And it has succeeded in enlisting the citizens of that state to act as an anti-abortion secret police. 
Lawrence Tribe and Stephen Bladick used the term Stasi, anti-abortion Stasi, which were the uh, East German secret police who were particularly vicious, the Stasi. Now, these two professors go on in saying that all of that about this bill would be problematic enough, but by enlisting private citizens to enforce the restriction that, that they want written into the law would make it very difficult to challenge the constitutionality of this bill in court. Uh, so a lawsuit filed in federal court in Austin last week tries to get around those roadblocks. And these two professors are hoping that the lawsuit filed last week will, will succeed. But if it fails... Not only would that leave the most restrictive so-called anti-abortion law in the country impervious to constitutional challenge, which I'll explain in just a second, but it would also encourage other states to follow the lead of Texas where it concerns abortion, as well as every other contested question of, of, of social policy, not just abortion. Now, again, please, let's keep in mind that these Christian fascists don't give a goddamn about a fetus. What they're talking about is control of a woman's privacy, i.e. a woman's sexuality. But to give you an example how this could metastasize, if, if, this, uh, 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 if, if this goes into effect, if this is not declared unconstitutional by, by a court, let me give you an example. California, for example, could shift to private enforcement of its gun control regulations. Never mind the Second Amendment implications of those restrictions. See, if California were to say, well, uh, we're going to pass a law that says private citizens have a right to um, notify the authorities when another private citizen has a gun. And the authorities will then have to investigate to see if that gun is held legally. Now, by doing it that way, nobody can challenge the state of California. Nobody can challenge the state of Texas for the constitutionality of this law. Who are you going to sue? Vermont could shift to private enforcement of its environmental regulations. Never mind uh, the federal preemption implications. And the list goes on. Uh, federal law, in other words, would be secondary to state law, and state law would place the enforcement of these insane laws in the hands of private citizens. Now, let me back up a little bit, because that's what these two professors do. In the abstract, allowing citizens to help enforce the law is nothing new. Um, we have laws here in Georgia. Many states have the so-called citizen suit or private attorney general provisions. That's what they're called. That allow people to help enforce a range of laws and rules governing, for example, uh, consumer protection or environmental protection. Uh, also, whistleblower laws that involve government transparency and the attempt by government to uh, hide what they are doing. And, and, and there's more. The federal government, in fact, authorizes citizens to help bring certain fraud claims on behalf of the United States. And the federal government allows those citizens to share in any damages that the feds might recover. So the critical point, though, in both of these contexts is that citizens are supplementing government enforcement. The enforcement is still maintained by the government, state or federal. And citizens are just assisting. But the Texas law, by contrast, the Texas law leaves private enforcement, enforcement in the hands of your neighbor, as the only mechanism for enforcing these broad restrictions on abortions after the sixth week of, uh, sixth week of pregnancy. Now, remember, this has nothing to do with abortion. 
The law specifically precludes the state's attorney general or any other state official from initiating enforcement. So they put this law on the books in, in Texas, but a provision in the law says it's up to other citizens to initiate action against the person who is suspected of about to have an abortion or has had an abortion if it falls before the six week and for the period. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying here? This is insane. Insane. Uh, if this seems crazy, the fact that under this new law, private enforcement takes the place of government enforcement. If this seems crazy, it is. This is insanity. And it's also a deeply cynical move on the part of these Christian fascists. It serves no purpose, this law, other than to make this ban on abortion, which is really control of a woman's sexuality, difficult, if not impossible, to challenge in court. Who are you going to challenge? The state is not enforcing the law. Your next door neighbor, some busybody Christian asshole down the street. What are you going to do? The two authors write this. When a state passes an unconstitutional law, the typical way to challenge it is to seek an injunction against the state officer in charge of enforcing the law. For example, like the state's attorney general or, or uh, whoever it might be, secretary of state. But as the U.S. Court of Appeals held in 2001, this was a federal appeals court uh, covering Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. Um, that appeals court said that when the state is not directly involved in enforcing a state law, None of the state's executive officers are proper defendants to such a lawsuit. So it's already been ruled that if such a law existed, where it depends on private citizen enforcement, who are you going to sue? You're not going to sue the state of Texas or Georgia or Vermont or wherever. By the same token, Challengers, uh, 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 it says, nor could challengers sue citizens who might try in the future to enforce the abortion restrictions, since there's no way to prove that those citizens, specifically those citizens, will do so. So you can't just, <laughs> you can't just walk out on the street and go up to your neighbor and say, uh, you're a Christian, right? Yeah, I'm a Christian. You vote for Trump, right? Yeah, I voted for Trump. All right, well, I'm going to file a lawsuit against you to stop you from interfering in my privacy as a woman. Uh, I don't want you to know whether or not I'm going to have an abortion. You can't do that because you can't prove that that person you're talking to will specifically be the person who would, who would order you that you're breaking the law. And to bring law enforcement down on your ash. So you can't, you, you understand what I'm saying here. This, this is madness. This is madness. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.